When you're on the hill, or preparing for a stalk, it can feel like you're a million miles away from putting good, healthy and safe food on someone's plate. The Scottish venison sector has been reviewing how it can improve food safety standards and minimise risk. Everyone involved has a moral responsibility from what happens on the hill to when that product leaves for the processor to ensure that the highest standards are met. This short film, part one of two, demonstrates the practical steps that stokers and deer managers must take in preparing a carcass immediately after the deer has been shot, showing the Gralich process at the point of kill with specific emphasis on minimizing risks of contamination from harmful bacteria. Before the shot is taken, the trained hunter must have the knowledge to detect abnormalities in the behaviour of the animal. Afterwards, they must be able to detect physical changes in the carcass both internally and externally, which are not normal and may indicate disease. Also, they must have an understanding of basic food hygiene. If gloves are worn, they should be clean and single use only. Wearing gloves will also help to limit the spread of bacteria if used correctly. Antibacterial wipes should also be available to keep gloves or hands clean. Where the carcass is to be extracted by dragging, as small a cut as possible should be made to expose the food pipe. The carcass should be gralicked following best practice as soon as possible after the kill, and certainly no more than one hour afterwards. Use a knife that can be easily cleaned. Your knife should always be cleaned before and between gralaking different carcasses and, ideally, between any outside work, i.e. in contact with the hair and any inside cutting. The food pipe should be cut and tied off, or a cable tie can be used to ensure no leakage. Your knife should be wiped between different aspects of the process, and particularly after cutting through the hair and then using it on the exposed meat of the carcass. Throughout the process, be extremely careful not to puncture the stomach. If this happens, then contamination may be excessive and render meat from the carcass unusable as food. Avoid putting your knife on or into the ground. This is another potential source of contamination. Carefully bring through the food pipe to ensure that it does not part from the stomach, causing a spill. Just a little contamination can render a carcass unsafe, so great care must always be taken when cutting from out to in. The gut and the back passage are major high-risk areas. Be sure to squeeze back all the feces before cutting through the gut and tying off to avoid any spillage. A carcass that has Fecal contamination should not be presented for processing for food production. The trained hunter should always thoroughly inspect the gralich, as it is unlikely to go to the larder. In areas where there is high public access pressure, then the gralich should be carefully hidden from view once inspected. Avoid dragging carcasses over land that is likely to be contaminated by bacteria, for example, where farm animals are or have recently been grazing, or where slurry has been spread, as the risk of E. coli 0157 is high in these areas. If there is no alternative route, then a clean drag bag must be used and thoroughly cleaned after each use. 
Any faecal contamination on the hair of the carcass may not initially seem a risk, but later may become a cross-contamination issue. We are now better informed with regard to where E. coli O157 and other pathogenic bacteria may arise in this first part of the wild venison supply chain. There is no doubt that the sourcing and handling of wild venison presents a number of challenges that are different from other sectors of the meat industry. The stalker is in control of this process from the moment he pulls the trigger to the time the carcass is uplifted by the game dealer. He should be striving to achieve the highest standards, ensuring every carcass is cooled without delay. The stoker has a major responsibility to ensure that he or she has done all they can to produce safe food and minimize risk to the consumer. Cooking food properly and following cookery instructions is also important in making sure that the food is absolutely safe to eat.